I'm Mark Simone, WOR radio host, and the ever popular David Asman, <laughs> Fox <laughs> Business anchor. Mark Simone, what stood out? Let's just look at this whole thing. I, I had some sound, maybe you disagree. What stood out in your mind about uh, Trump's performance? It was brilliant. He was very effective. You can tell from every liberal having a meltdown on TV today. <laughs> <I know. laughs> uh, it's supposed to be a town hall. That means the voters ask the questions. Right. Instead, this woman decides it'll be a, a little mini January 6th uh, committee. Right. Best moment was the focus group afterwards. They said to this guy, uh, why does he keep talking about uh, January 2020th? And he said, I think because your first question was about January 2020th. <laughs> yeah. uh, they got three million viewers. Tonight they'll be back to family and friends only audience. So. <laughs> A couple hundred. Yeah. Uh, she was, I think, just not ready for were there, this. Were there any polls out today about Trump's performance? I'm sure they'll be polling on this. Uh, yeah, but they'll fake uh, college polls and oh. uh, media <laughs> polls. But, you know, you got to be like Leslie Stahl, a veteran. If you're going to be rough... Yeah. You have to have a neutral look on your face and a calm tone. You could see in her face rage and hatred for Donald Trump. You can't do that when you're a moderator means moderate, not not, not take a but side. The, but, but she always, she was the one, when, when he started making sense on, on policy, yeah. whether it was economic policy, border policy, foreign policy, that's when she got nervous. And I have a feeling, you know, we all have these IFBs. Hopefully we don't get interrupted much by the producers. I have a feeling she got a lot of producers screaming at her, go back to January 6th, go back to the uh, 2020 right. election. You, when he was getting traction on all these issues, and the reason is because comparing Trump's term as president and his success on the economy, on limiting uh, migration from the border, on foreign policy successes, compare any one of those issues to Joe Biden, and he wins. He wins hands so down. I, so I, I think, think that was her fear, is that uh, drawing on, give him a winning Drawing game. on your prior history uh, of being a reporter and an economics guy, um, I know you're a celebrity's anchor now, but when, before this happened, I thought that was the best part of the thing. Now, I know because I'm an economics guy myself, but I thought he really captured, here's what I did, on energy, uh, taxes, on regulation, right. on prosperity. That's what people want to hear. You know, on this, we've had Art Laffer keep saying the best candidate's going to be the one with a serious prosperity agenda. Kellyanne Conway keeps saying the same thing. Steve Forbes keeps saying the same thing. I keep saying the same thing. Um, if Trump stays on message like that, I mean, he did that in one little 30-second sound. It was really quite and, extraordinary. And, but again, you have to, you can't avoid the comparison with the policy failures of the Biden administration whenever he brings up the policy. That's why she was trying like hell to get him back yeah. to January 6th and, and 2020. I also think People don't understand, Mark, how important negotiations are in, in a presidency, right? You can't just wave a magic wand. You've got to sit down. And how good a negotiator Trump was and is and presumably will be. If you listen to what he was saying on the abortion question, on Putin and the Ukraine, uh, other matters, he was saying, oh, the debt ceiling... We'll negotiate this out. And if I have to bludgeon them with a default threat, then I'll bludgeon them with a default threat. Look, I saw it. I was in the China trade team. For two years, we hassled that out. He bludgeoned them with tariffs. The reason he could get remain in Mexico, he bludgeoned Mexico with a tariff threat. I mean, that's a lost art. And I don't think these kids, Ms. Collins and whoever, they don't understand how important it is. And I saw it. 40 years earlier with Reagan, who ran the Screen Actors Guild and negotiated the only strike in the history of that union. Right. Yeah, it's the one time he shut her down. The fourth time she said, will you call him a war criminal? He made it clear, I, I can't do that if I want to negotiate right. with him. And she, show, he, he, she realized he's talking about statesmanship. If I say he's a That's war criminal, right. he's got to fight even harder now. There's another point to that, which is that that shows it's not just the policy, it's how you apply the policy, how you use it at the negotiating table. And not everybody who's running for, for the nomination, the Republican nomination, has that skills. That skill set, not only does he have the skill set, he came into office in 2016 with the skill set, but that experience to put it to work. I don't want to say others couldn't have done a good job. I mean, I, that is not my point. Governor DeSantis will be tested on this, too. 
But I do think he had a very good night last night. And I think having it on CNN, I mean, I think CNN may regret it because they're all trashing it afterwards, which I thought was really in bad, incredible bad taste for a network to trash their own production, okay? But really, um, I think it gave him a lift. And I think whatever other troubles he may have, people saw how good he can be. He's not always that good, but they saw how good he can be. Now, I don't know that DeSantis could do that. He's new at this. You've got to be able to control your temper. We know Joe Biden would be taken out in a stretcher after five minutes of that kind of question. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> By the way, he, he can't negotiate because no. he's non copus I, I, I wrote down your, your phrase, barely copacetic. I'm I thought that you. was a beautiful phrase. Right. There. Aquila is killing us, everything. <laughs> They're screaming in my ear. It's, it's really, the whole thing's a conspiracy. Mark Simone and David Asman, thank you, gentlemen.